Hello again, welcome back everyone. Liquor Hound here with you. Thank you for joining me once again for another Spirit Review video. And today we're going to be taking a look at the latest release from Ardebeg, that being the Dark Cove release. And the 2016 release of Dark Cove is going to be hitting in two different waves. The first uh, wave that came through, at least my area, Texas, is the committee release. And that is a tan label, you know, the usual higher ABV version. This being 55% ABV and usually at a much uh, higher price. This being about 125 to 145 somewhere in there. Now, the second wave that's going to come through is going to be the standard release. It's going to be the darker label, Dark Cove. And from what I've been hearing, it could possibly be uh, or eventually become a standard release. So you'll see, you know, Ardbeg, Ugadal, Corvrecken, Tin, Dark Cove. Who knows? That's just what I'm hearing. We'll see. But the standard release Dark Cove is going to be around 46, 46.5% ABV. Hopefully at a much lower price because it needs to be competitive with guys like Ugarol. Um Now, again, Ugarol standard release runs about $60, $65, depending on where you're at. Again, no age statement. Both of these no age statements. Um, Ugarol is a combination of ex-bourbon barrel and Oloroso matured Artebeg. And Dark Cove is a combination of ex-bourbon and some of the darkest sherry casks. That's about all they say. Now, if you turn around on the back, it says, big bold letterings right at the top, the darkest Artebeg ever. Hmm. Okay. Whew. Sounds impressive, right? That could mean, oh man, they put in a lot of old Artebeg in it. Could. It could also mean that Maybe they just, you know, gave a little extra char to the barrels, or maybe they use a little PX sherry in the uh, barrel um, maturation process, or maybe they did a combination of Oloroso and PX. Who knows? Uh, the only way we can kind of tell is from the palate and the nose, which we're going to do here in a minute. But we're going to see if it's worth paying, you know, sixty to seventy dollars more for, you know, from Ugarol to acquire a Dark Cove at least the committee release. All right, so let's go ahead and get to the nosing. Artebeg Ugarol, they've been opening up for about five minutes now. No water has been added, so this is 54.2%. Matter of fact, before I get to the nose, let me go off on that a little uh, quick. So 54.2% ABV Ugarol. Now Ugarol has been around since about 2005, I think. And if you look in the back of these bottles, right here, just either on the dimple or beside the dimple, you'll see a little laser etched code. I'm sorry for getting a little whiskey nerd on you, but that's what we're gonna do, that's what we are. So it says, this one says L10, that's the first digits, three digits of, looks like about a 10 digit code. Now L10 simply means 2010. L being, a, you could just say that means year, year 2010, L10. Uh, they also, you know, go back. I know there was some L5s. Uh, the one that Jim Murray raved about years ago was the L7. Uh, the L12s, the 2012s, were also known to be very, very good batches. So there is some batch variants that you will see in the Oogies. And this being the 2010 version, I don't think it's particularly, you know, tremendous, but it's not necessarily horrible either. It's right down the middle of the road. Good value, $60, $65. All right, so let's go ahead and get to the nosing now. With Ugarol, no age statement, Oloroso Sherry X Bourbon Barrel, 54.2%. Wow, nice. So the thing that I know is immediately is a combination of slightly sweet, smoky, briny type aspects to this. A little bit of that Oceanside campfire aspect. You've got a little pork there. Maybe just a hint of a little smoked uh, fish, you know, kind of kippering type aspect. But the, the Oloroso that's contributing here is a lot of dried red fruit. So dried, I would say more dried prunes, dried raisins, a little dried fig, cinnamon's popping out of that glass a little bit with a little bit of clove as well. 
And again, I always search around different levels of the glass, different edges, trying to find, you know, the different aromatics that are coming out at different levels. It definitely has some of that uh, smoked port character to it. Trying to see if there's, there's this there's a little twinge of a citrus uh, zest as well in here. That's coming, that's, you know, it, it, you can see the Ardbeg 10 uh, aspect to the Ugadal. That's something that you're gonna find in the Ardbeg 10. The, the smoke is definitely pretty bold. It kind of shows up right away on the nose and it kind of goes throughout. You're kind of digging through that to get the other elements. But it's not offensive in any way. And a little bit of that barley note, that that fermented barley, that grain the aspect that you'll get in the L, uh, the sorry, the uh, Ardbeg 10 is definitely coming through here. So you get that sense of a little young Ardbeg, but that's not in a bad way. Really nice. Nothing wrong with that whiskey. Okay, the darkest Ardbeg ever, Dark Cove. Wow, okay, that's a different nose. This one's definitely heading towards vanilla icing, um, custardy, vanilla custard type aspect is the first thing I noticed. The cinnamon and clove are definitely much more muted, less, less spicy on the nose than the Ugaral. There's a little bit of cocoa powder, a little chocolate, little old leather aspect to it. And of course there's the dried fruits. Now this one I would say is leaning not quite on the raisins, a little more a little more prune, plum, fig type aspect to the fruits to go along with that nice vanilla, cinnamon muted it's a little less Saigon cinnamon like we were getting here, a little spicier cinnamon. This is more standard, regular cinnamon, clove. I would cut, say a combination of citrus oils here. So a little lemon, lime, a little orange peel as well. Ba uh, you know what that is. I know what that is. But uh, I'm not going to say it just yet. Let me taste it to make sure I'm on the right track there. But I definitely sense a little sweeter, a little sweet intensity on this one than this one. Okay? All right, now let's go back to the tasting. Without water, 54.2% Ugadol. Oh, it's nice. Good medium, above medium viscosity. It's pretty oily. It's a good comment to me. It, the first impression that I get is a good combination of Ardbeg 10 and a little little older Ardbeg that's been sherry matured uh, because you're getting that oiliness that Ardbeg 10 usually doesn't have. Um, Ardbeg 10 can be a little, uh, not in a bad way, but a little one dimensional. Uh, this has that extra richness of that sherry on top of it to just carry it just a little further. The smoke has a little creosote, little soot character to it. It is a little briny, a little bit of those red fruits that I talked about earlier, just kind of on the nose, coming through right here on the palate. Dates, raisins, a little fig. Wow, right here as we get to this, just past the cinnamon and clove kind of intensity, they kind of swell a little bit. Then you, it leads you right into the 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 smoke and the creosote that little it turns a little ashy you get a little cigar ash on the finish a little little sourness to the fruits as well not in a bad way just like almost like they're slightly stewed uh, is what we're getting on the Ugadol so it feels a little heavier not a bad thing especially for a whiskey that's 60 65 dollars very very complex would work great in anybody's bar. Man, great, great stuff. Now we're gonna see what Dark Cove has to offer. We're gonna see if it's worth the extra 60, 70 bucks.
I would guess that's definitely PX Sherry. Much sweeter style. The, the a dessert style of Artebeg. But I do get that vanilla custard, that vanilla icing type aspect right up front. That zingy lemon lime zest. Maybe even a little orange peel as well. Uh, just to go with it. The cinnamon not quite as intense as over here on the Oogadol. A little more integrated, a little more balanced clove and cinnamon, but they kind of play really nicely. The uh, thing I will note on this one is that as this... Mm, hmm, I was starting to get... It's starting to transition now. So after I got past the mid palette and on the finish, I started getting dried uh, tobacco leaf on it. A little 60% uh, chocolate. Not quite, not 70, not super dark. Almost a little combination, a little sweetness to that milk chocolate, uh, but with the dark as well. And old leather. I would call that old leather on the back end. So, you know, old dried tobacco leaves, old leather. You're getting that old whiskey feel a little bit on the back end. So up front, it's kind of sweet, a little vibrant without being spicy. Uh, of course, the smoke creeps in and it's just carrying everything through just like this one did, but not nearly as much soot or creosote. And on this one, um, you do get a little bit of that cigar ash, but it's way, it's like right now, it's like, in, you know, long into the finish is where that uh, soot starts transitioning and getting you that ash feel. To whereas here, I could definitely see the Ardbeg 10 character. Here it's a little more um, hard to distinguish. Um, to me, again, if anything I was going to compare this to, I would think Perpetuum. And I know Perpetuum, again, caught a lot of grief because it was the lighter side of Ardbeg. And, you know, a lot of people did not like that considering where Ardbeg was going with their no-age statements, you know. Um, Perpetuum, when it came along to me, it was, and I reviewed it, it was not my cup of tea, you know, and I understood what they were doing. I kind of, I've talked with several friends and we've kind of decided, well, maybe they were, for the 200th anniversary, they were shooting for a whiskey that they could make enough of and at a low enough price point that everybody could get a bottle. And I think they accomplished that. And it's not terribly offensive or anything. It is the lighter side of Artebeg. But to me, I thought, well, I'm not going to be around for the 300th anniversary, so I was kind of hoping, you know, they did something to harken back to what the old, really rich style of Artebeg was. The softer, not necessarily, it was, the old Artebeg was very rich and, and soft at the same time, even though the ABVs may have been high, like the 2010, 2009 Supernovas, they were, they were very rich and, and they were high ABV, but they were very soft feeling. Amazing whiskeys. So I was kind of thinking, you know, Perpetuum is definitely the softer side, but it didn't have the mouthfeel. It didn't have the viscosity, uh, but it did have that vanilla custard and that icing type aspect that I'm getting here. So this is almost to me like a, if you took Perpetuum, bolstered it up to 55% ABV, and then threw on some Pedro Jimenez uh, maturation just to give it a little more sweetness, a little more complexity. That's kind of what Dark Cove is to me. Long-winded, right? Sorry. <laughs> yes, but the dessert style. So Perpetuum, the lighter side of Artebeg. Dark Cove, the dessert style of Artebeg. Um, the PX really helps it carry the richness feel without being super, without it necessarily containing a ton of old Artebeg. But wow, it, you really have to dig through to find like the Artebeg 10, the, the, the barley note that you kind of get on the 10 in here uh, is a little harder to see here. The, again, that old leather, that tobacco, that 60% that uh, chocolate, almost like cocoa, uh, cacao nibs that very, very nicely integrated with everything else. Overall. Fantastic stuff. Now, let me add a little bit of water. We can see what happens here. I'll do three drops on the Ugadol and two drops on the Dark Cove simply because the levels are a little less here. Maybe indicative of, you know, what I enjoy. I think, 
I mean, I, I, I love Oogadol, and there's no reason it shouldn't be in anybody's bar. Uh, but, wow, this is, again, dessert. It's a sweeter style. Okay, Oogadol with a couple drops. I usually like to let it sit a little bit to let those wood tannins come up and then dissipate. But I'm just going to have to try and aerate this thing just a little bit. Kind of speed that up a little bit. Okay. The one thing I'll notice on Oogadol right away, the cinnamon spice has been muted a little bit. I wouldn't want to call this Saigon cinnamon here because it's not that spicy. It's actually now it's been brought down, tempered just a little bit. Wow, without sacrificing very much viscosity. Still, medium, just above medium, really nice. Especially that price point is ridiculous. Again, good balance of sweetness, young Ardbeg, sherry Ardbeg. Not overly complex, it kind of enters, it presents itself very nicely. Good broad band of flavors. And it's just like, there it is, let's run with it. And it's going to slowly fade away. That's it. It doesn't really develop or transition. Dark Cove. Wow. Yeah, it's... um. A little less, it doesn't take water quite as well as Oogadol. I actually feel the, the viscosity kind of suffer. It actually sets back just a little bit, just medium viscosity now with that addition of water, but everything else remains the same. That PX is just adding, what I assume is PX, is just adding a ton of richness to it. It did make the, uh, the cigar ash come out a little faster and be a little more um, dominant here on the back end. Everything else remains about the same with the vanilla, the custardy type aspect going in with that citrus zest, those um, dark fruits. Again, it is, that's what that is. When I was nosing it, I was kind of getting that and I wanted to taste it. Uh, when I did the sherry video, I think a video or two back, I reviewed the Beaumore Devil's Cask, and when you get that one, I remember it having bacon-wrapped dates, like candy dates, bacon-wrapped. That's kind of what you get here, that PX adding that, that richness and the sweetness. And then you get that smoked meat, that smoked pork character that carries here, but the Oloroso here doesn't add enough sweetness to make it feel that way. Here it does. So, anyway. Wow. Really good. Don't judge these because by the volumes because, yes, I do love Dark Cove. I think it's really nice. Uh, I know it's going to be a little hard to get on the committee bottling. I hope the standard bottling is adequate, but I'm not really holding up too good of hopes because that two drops of water did drop that viscosity down for me a little too much. Uh, but we'll have to wait and see on that. Again, if you can't get this, no sweat. Hopefully you can find it at a bar, get a taste of it. You'll see what it's like this guy i hope this guy never goes away so everybody please leave uh, keep leaving those great comments everybody have a good evening and cheers